Mr. Epsom. Robot. A machine barely operational. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to build the world's most effective salt cleaning robot. Mr. Epsom will be that robot. Better than he was before. Better at cleaning salt. Stronger at cleaning salt. Faster at cleaning salt. Okay. All right. Hello. Welcome. Hey, everybody. This is this is the Daily Solutions podcast. You know, we don't we don't say that every time, but thought I'd throw that out there. I'm Make Graham. Sure you're listening to the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought this is Money World. <laughs> All right, and cool. no Mashcon. Yeah, this guy was about to fill it in for you. So, <laughs> um, we got a nice softball today. All right. Yep, uh, and it is: What are the health benefits we can say for sure <laughs> come from floating? Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was kidding about the softball. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's this is good. I'm I'm happy you're asking this question, dear listener, because it's uh we should be asking this question. It's it's really it's too and we easy. You get asked it all if you are a float center owner, you get asked it all the time. Or you just get asked like what what why would someone float? And it's really easy to go off with all sorts of different things that you hear or you've heard somebody else say or you've read somewhere on the internet or whatever. And you know, not all those are entirely backed up by actual like research. My favorite is probably still the two hours in the float tank equals eight hours of sleep. Of sleep, yeah. You hear that thrown around a lot. Seemingly from nothing. There's not, I can't find any any place that came from other than it's just referenced in the Book of Floating as yeah. it having existed before that. But magnesium being absorbed into your skin, we don't actually know. Like, there's not any like great credible research so far out there about about that uh, backing that up. Like it might or it might not be happening. But you know, people say that as if there's been studies and studies and studies showing kind of transdermal magnesium absorption, which there hasn't been. Yep. Addiction treatment. It's another one that sadly we don't really have much research for, you know, just saying like it helps with, um, yeah, being addicted to cigarettes or it helps with withdrawals from opioids or whatever it is. And again, there's, there's a decent amount of anecdotes for that, but no, no hard research to back it up really. And the funny thing, uh, yeah, the funny thing is that you, you read a lot of research and you see these titles and what, what you need to pay attention to is sometimes this research was done with other forms of rest other forms of restricted environmental stimulation therapy so back in like the early days people were doing a lot of research with dry dry rest like float tanks that you get into basically a float tank except the water is inside of kind of a membrane that you lie on um, or chamber rest where they had an entire room that you'd go into for usually much longer periods of time like 24 hours inside of one of these so when you read about like smoking addiction and smoking cessation, and there is a study out there about you know floating or uh, rest specifically helping people deal with smoking addiction, that was actually like a chamber rest study where they had people in there for a long time and they they actually couldn't replicate it in an actual uh, float tank. And you know it's not it's not to say that like these things would uh, wouldn't be true were we to test them. Like basically, it's just saying that we don't we don't have no, those tests. A lot of times, it's that these tests haven't been run. There's a lot of research to yeah, do out there, yeah, and yeah. you know, there's only so much of it that's that's actually happened, or even some of the stuff that has happened has been very small studies with just a few people, and and maybe not the same scope of kind of empirical data that you're used to seeing when you're looking at kind of more substantial research for for other topics. Yeah, which is a good lesson too. Just the the fact that there's a research article out there, even if it's specifically on floating, not not on chamber rest doesn't mean that necessarily the results of that singular study are applicable to a more generalized statement. Uh, so you can find, uh, you know, uh, again, a lot of small-scale art- articles that got published on maybe even four to eight participants, or sometimes it's even case studies with just one or, or two people who are being studied in depth and, and how floating helps them. So, um, you know, just uh, I guess just something for your own mind to keep uh, to keep there is people running studies on things and showing positive effects still doesn't mean that we can just claim those outright as for sure benefits. So yeah, be careful, especially when you're writing things on your website and your brochures, when things are entering kind of a slightly Skywriting. More, yeah, when you got hired an airplane to <laughs> list float facts in the air. Uh, you, you know, those these are places to especially take the time and be diligent and make sure that what you're putting up there is is something that is is a little bit more substantial than just anecdotes. So... And that's it. So getting into some of the benefits, I will totally direct you to a couple of resources on our site that um, have been updated over the last year, which are really great. Uh, one of those is just the scientific research list. 
um, its most recent update actually has next to every article, whether it's about flotation rest or chamber rest or original sensory deprivation way back in the day, like pre-50s. Uh, and uh, kind of divides them up into those, and also whether they're scholarly articles or um, spoken presentations, things like that. So if you haven't looked at that recently, that has a really nice breakdown of the articles that actually exist on flotation specifically, not mixed in with chamber rest. So definitely check that out. And another good one, if you haven't read it recently, is the About Float Tanks Guide, uh, which got a massive update this last year, Uh, and specifically in the science part, too, just because... We thought this conversation was one that needed to happen and, and be looked into a little more in depth. So check that out. Um, you know, flip to the back for talking about the, the scientific benefits. And same thing. We actually broke down benefits by flotation rest, benefits by chamber rest, and then just anecdotes that we tend to hear from our customers uh-huh. and that might likely have results should they be studied, but we don't have hard evidence for. So both of those are like a great, a great jumping off point that'll go way deeper than we're going to talk about today. And with the About Float Tanks guide... Uh, which is just free. It's on our Float Tank Solution site. Uh, you can that one we actually had reviewed by some of the researchers out there, so it wasn't just us being like this seems right. <laughs> like we had uh, we had actual you know people who had been doing that research go through and make sure we were we were kind of accurately portraying the information. Yeah, so Tom Fine, who of course did some early float research, reviewed the whole thing. Um, Dr. Feinstein looked over his sections. Um, Dr. Kjellgren from uh, over in Sweden looked over things. So. Um, actually, like a really nice, um, really nice reviewed set of information there, and actually the same thing for the the scientific research list too. We had that looked over by um, Tom Fine just for accuracy and making sure that we weren't listing articles that um, had been on there twice, or you know, some of this stuff is from back in the '80s and things that he was creating, and it's a little hard to piece it <laughs> together on your own. So, um, so yeah, definitely uh, both of those are free downloads too, just on the the Float Tank Solutions site. If you just click our our free resources area, that'll pull you right there. Yeah, another good thing to uh, to check out is uh, Peter Sudfeld, one of the the kind of uh, founding fathers of of float research. Did a bunch of the the kind of big research back in the day. Came in and did a talk at the float conference where he wrote, he gave a presentation, basically kind of breaking down the research that's been done or, or kind of the benefits of floating, and he broke them into categories of like. What do we actually, what can we say is backed by kind of, backed by data? And he kind of went over that and he made another category of like, what do we think is true, but maybe needs a little bit more substance behind it? And what do we not really have have data for right now? Um, so it's a good talk. It's, it's, it's a talk from the uh, 2015 Float Conference. So if you go to the Float Conference website or, or if you just go to YouTube and type in Peter Sudfeld Float Conference and look for the 2015 talk, that's a great little kind of primer for for learning about float knowledge. Yeah, it's a, that's an awesome talk. I mean, honestly, even for your staff members, like I, I would recommend everyone go through and listen to the Peter Sudfeld talk and read that about float tanks guide kind of yeah. summary. And like those two combined, just really like arm you with a great set of information on what has actually been studied out there. We actually do. We require when we hire employees, that's part of their training because we want to make sure that our employees are also not like spreading misinformation or, or kind of rumors and stuff like that out there. So that's that's part of what we feel like is our responsibility as a float center is making sure our staff also is kind of knowledgeable and knows what to say and what not to say. And definitely if you have other resources you like, you know, email them our way so we can put them up in the show notes. But in my mind, those those two are kind of like the big summary overview yeah, benefits kind of those three <laughs> <laughs> and the, i guess i was excluding the research list from uh-huh. that i mean that's nice for like knowing what um titles are out there and right. stuff but benefits wise yeah sudfeld and the the about float tanks guide so that said you know we can we can we'll take a little bit of time just to cover some generalities of of common areas that are touted as being beneficial to float tanks and a little bit of what's out there you know so i mean i'd say the biggest one that has a lot of studies backing it up in some kind of way is, is stress relief or just relaxation, uh-huh. right? And and you see this just across many of even the smaller studies, many of the larger studies, Justin Feinstein's most recent studies, just this sense of, of reduced um, anxiety, reduced stress, or especially increased relaxation just seems to be present in almost everyone, you know, even if they were trying to measure for something totally different, like also relaxation went up according to the surveys, you know? Um, so that's just pretty ubiquitous across across everything. When you, when you start getting into more um, specific claims about relaxation, things like that, um, stress relief, I'd say, you know, especially with Justin's most recent stuff, talking about anxiety mm-hmm. is probably one of the, the best studied areas that you can now reference people to. Yeah, which is research currently is just about kind of a single float session 
and the, the effects of that. So, you know, again, in terms of being careful about what you're saying, if you're if you're trying to make sure you're saying things that are backed by by data, his data is really about that, like a single float session, not about long lasting effects or multiple floats or things like that. This is his most recent research. Yeah, and in clinical populations too, so not just your average human beings, but but it, yeah, he's got healthy populations too. Yeah, and again, it does seem to um, sort of extend. I, th- I think that that uh, oh, I guess with the second paper he has coming out, he does the healthy populations. Uh-huh. Yeah, um, pain reduction. Another one that I think you can pretty safely claim, at least for for certain disorders. I mean, both for um, kind of chronic pain conditions and also just pain relief from acute pain that you might have from exercising or or something like that. Both of those seem to uh, both show nice relief in the float tanks. And that's backed by uh, research from, um, you know, Tom Fine and uh, John Turner and also by uh, Manette Kjellgren and, and some other people over in Sweden, too, have kind of shown some nice results about that. Um, and of course, it's another one. Like so many of these are not going to sound crazy, if, especially if you run a float center or <laughs> if know. you float yourself. You like it helps with pain, and you're like, it's people. yeah. So that's not. I mean, you could uh, you could see dozens and dozens more studies completed on this, and the anecdotes are still probably the the stronger part of this, which is so often you just hear people coming out and it's helped with really serious pain relief yeah. that they are not expecting it to help with. Like they've tried ten other treatments and are totally convinced floating is just another in a line of things that's going to fail. And yeah, and you know, I feel comfortable succeeds. saying stuff like that when people ask me things. I'm like, well, you know, we have a lot of people who float with us who say they get a lot of pain relief. Like, yep. And that's, that's a great I'm, out, too. Yeah, I'm, for, like, comfortable making a statement like that because it's, it's true. We get a lot of people floating with us who tell us a lot about pain relief. And, like, whether there's been a study or not that, it like, has data on that, like, it doesn't change the fact that over and over and over again I see people coming to our center and telling us that afterwards. And I'm not stating it like it's, it's some big research project, like project that's been done either. Yeah, and that's a good lesson, too. You know, we're trying to go over some of the benefits that have actually been studied a little more in depth here. But just kind of referring back to those anecdotal stories that you hear in your own center is totally a valid way to answer that question if you get it from from clients. Because often how they'll phrase it is, will this help with my anxiety? Or, hey, I got in a car accident three years ago. Do you think this will help with my back pain or something like that? Mm -hmm. And just like we're not doctors, which I'll give a little disclaimer here, we're not. (laughs) We we are definitely not doctors. We may have thought that we we are, but (laughs) no. Um, You know, and, and unless you are a doctor, neither are you. (laughs) <laughs> is the other part of that. So don't make medical claims. You know, don't, don't, if that person asks, will this help with my back pain? Don't say, oh, yeah. Or even, well, you know, probably. Uh, it's much better to say, well, it's helped past clients with their back pain. Or, yes, we just had someone come in here last week who had chronic pain from a car injury and it seemed really to help them. So hopefully, you know, that's a, I think, a much safer, more real, true answer. <laughs> um, all right. What else over here? I'm just kind of going through our about float tanks guide for the general categories. Improved mental health was the next one I had on the list. Uh, so, you know, both for uh, anxiety and depression are kind of two of the big things that have been studied now. Uh, a little bit of, of you'll see some other symptoms and, and things pop up in some smaller studies, but definitely anxiety, depression, both with Justin's current work and with some of the work coming out of Sweden, uh, both seems to be showing positive benefits uh, mm-hmm. kind of a- across the board for a lot of the patients coming in. Which is really cool. Again, listen to the Justin Feinstein episode, too, of the Daily Solutions podcast if you um, didn't get a chance to catch that one. Because he really goes into exactly what can be claimed about his studies. So kind of this conversation, but refined down to just the work that he was doing. Yeah. Um, Anything else on uh, mental health stuff? Um, Just that, yeah, PTSD is another one you might hear um, claims being made for, and... It's another one where I think that's much more anecdotally supported than supported by any real studies right now. So definitely be ca- careful with what you claim on the PTSD front. Um, that said, you know, uh, initial um, kind of pilot studies and also just anecdotal evidence and some small scale informal kind of surveys that we've been giving out at our center really seem to show that it is positive, at least for some people with PTSD. But again, not so if the since the question is for sure, uh-huh, right. I would I would exclude <laughs> PTSD from from that category. Uh, there's also, there has been some work done with um, actual, like, improving, like, performance, improving yep. performance, right, across uh, a different, like, sports and stuff like that. So there was, like, a marksmanship study. Yep, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so marksmanship, um, 
Yeah, just general performance enhancement. Probably this is a silly anecdote um, of a study. So it's like an anecdote <laughs> of a study someone ran. But I really liked when we were over in Sweden. Um, and I forget who was presenting. Maybe it was Norlander. Um, no, it wasn't. No, is that like An- Anders? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Presenting on how they were studying uh, floating and its benefits for swimmers. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, what they found was that it totally, like, absolutely, if they threw the, the swimmers in the float tanks, you know, they'd do better at, at swimming. Unless they went to swim right after floating, in which case their performance dropped, which I just thought was was hilarious for that study. It was like they're, they're just like too chilled out to really get into that competitive swimming mindset or something. And if you waited a couple hours, then the effects came back. But And this is something that we, I imagine, uh, if you came to the Flow Conference last year, and there's the talks are up online now, there's uh, research being done across a few universities, especially Ohio State University, mm-hmm. in collaboration with the Air Force's research lab, where... They're installing these float tanks for collegiate athletic groups and and tracking their their kind of uh, performance and and biometrics and stuff through the process of them floating as part of their training. So none of that's been published yet. You know, this this just started up not too long ago. But uh, you know, it, I wouldn't be surprised if in the next few years we we saw some more kind of substantial data about performance enhancement. Which is so cool. That's some of the most exciting stuff that's going on right uh-huh. now. Like that, I'm I'm really stoked to see come out too. Is um just because they have such a giant pool of control data. Like the the university takes just so many lot. measurements yeah. on there, and they have so many students. If you want the talks from last year, are uh, Bob Mangin is one talk, and Lydia Caldwell is another. You can find those just Float Conference 2017, and you'll see their their names on the videos if you want to watch those. Yeah, really interesting. But yeah, just a giant pool of data because the university has already been measuring stats or the um, uh, kind of biometrics on their athletes for mm-hmm. a while, which isn't even super common for universities. <laughs> so like, what a good control. Anyway, that's, yeah, I hope some cool stuff comes out of there. Um, similarly on the, the military side, and a lot of this hopefully is going to be replicated now in the the private field, But um, and it, none of this has been released. So this also isn't stuff that you can... Uh, say for sure it helps, but they seem to be showing a lot of help with like hypervigilance for things like the Navy SEALs coming back, where when you come back from a mission, you have trouble sleeping, you're just kind of always on red alert, and helping kind of cool cool down your nervous system and kind of get back to um, baseline is also, again, kind of like a scientific anecdote <laughs> coming yeah. out there. So Yeah, we don't know what they studied, or they're not going to release the data. The Navy SEALs had some float tanks, so we, we really have no idea what... Uh, <laughs> actual studies they ran or anything, but that was at least what they told us they, they said people were experiencing. Yeah, so you can kind of see how a lot of this hits that gray area. You know, I mean, even even some of the most thorough studies that we have don't have hundreds of participants, right? Like if we had a study that had a couple hundred participants, you'd pretty much be the biggest float study that was out there. Uh-huh. So, you know, take take everything for, for what it's worth. This is still a field very much being studied, but one of the cool things is that the effect sizes, um, despite being of such small um, uh, sample sizes are still pretty large, you know, and it's kind of um, it's kind of neat to see that the effects are so big that even in a small population, they become obvious uh, for some of the reporting, which is cool. Uh, okay, last last one here, uh, which is uh, women's health is how we, we labeled it in here. But um, basically like helping with... Um, PMS symptoms is one of the things that's been showed, and also pregnant ladies seem to get a whole lot out of the float tank, and there's been some kind of informal uh, studies done to to that regard as well. So, um, you know, especially around around PMS and PMS sim- symptoms, you can actually make some claims going back to um, Arid Barabaj's work. And there's uh, there's actually another good conference talk from uh, Kristen and, and Lena, Kristen Garish and Lena Killick who uh, run a, a birthing center up in Alaska, gave a talk at the 2016 float conference uh, where they just talk about kind of their experience working with, with pregnant women. So again, not like a giant controlled peer-reviewed study or, or anything like that, but still some good information and definitely, again, anecdotally for women coming through. We just hear so many good things from pregnant ladies. I'd kind of be surprised if uh-huh. eventually that wasn't something that really got shown <laughs> to be a benefit of, of floating. But again, as far as for sure, we can't really make too many claims in that area yet. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's kind of the categories, at least, that, that we break it into for the stuff that we can say. Us kind of going through some of the, the more serious anecdotes that we have. Yeah, is there anything else? Yeah, I mean, stay diligent. 
keep looking stuff up. It's good to always have that kind of question. Everything we're saying, you. we could just be lying to you right yeah, now. Like, you yeah. don't know until we you did. go. We did. One of the things we said is actually fake, so you're gonna have to go back and figure out which one it is. Which one is it? <laughs> it was our names at the beginning. Yeah, my name's Graham. <laughs> I'm Ashgun. <laughs> and if you have any more hard hitting questions, go over to floattanksolutions.com/podcast. Yep, send them in there. We'll answer them here, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everyone.